last time we have discussed about the gold electroscope. Now today we are going to be discussing about conductors and insulators. As you know, in periodic table there are different kind of the elements. The elements which are in the first three group of table. They are called conductors. The elements which are in the last three group of cables are called non conductors or insulators. So, what are the definitions of conductors? So, you can see here there are so many substances which can allow the electrical charges or electricity to pass through them. Elect easily are known as conductors. Some substances allow electricity to pass through them easily are called conductors. Why? Because they have electric charges like electrons that are free to move inside the material. Metallic substances human body, animal bodies and earth are good conductors. Then what about the insulators or known conductors? Most of the known metallic substances like glass, gold, plastic, porcelain, nylon are known as insulators. Why? Because they do not allow the electric charges or electricity to pass through them easily and they are offering very high resistance to the passage of electricity through them so they are known as bad conductors or insulators. Now here there is a main point for them if you put certain charges on conductor, then these charges will distribute immediately on the entire surface of conductor. But in contradiction, if some charges are allowed to put on insulators, then they stay only at the same place. They do not distribute over the entire surface of insulator. So this is the main difference between conductors and insulator when you are putting a certain charges on them. Now let us try to understand another topic. It is earthing or grounding. What happening when we take a certain charged body and let it allow to bring in contact with the earth through conducting wire or through any conducting body. Then excess of charges from this charged body are easily entered into the earth through the conducting body. That conducting body may be our body or may be conductor. And this kind of the process of sharing of charges from a charged body to the earth through the conductor is called grounding or earthing and this earthing is most important in physics when you are using any electric circuit or any electrical appliances then it must be grounded or it must be earthing. This earthing provides safety measures for electrical circuits and appliances like TV, refrigerator, electric iron which we are using in our houses. Because of this earthing, this kind of the electrical appliances are sometimes not be going to be more damaged. How try to understand? For the purpose of earthing near the main supply of our house or of our buildings. A thick metallic plate is buried deep into the earth and a thick wire are drawn out from this plate. The electric wire 
Friday in our houses, as you know, are three kinds. One is live wire, another is neutral, and third is earth. You can see very well. This live wire is red in color, neutral is black in color, and earth is green in color. Out of these three wires, the first two wire carrying the electric current for power station. And the third wire is always be earth -y. by connecting it to the buried metallic plate. When metallic body of the appliances are connected to the earth wire and because of which when any fault occurs in this electric appliances or when your live wire touches the metallic body of the appliances, then what happening? All the charges of the electricity flow to the earth without damaging the appliances and without causing any injury to the human body. And this is the advantage of earthing or advantage of grounding. Now we discuss about Coulomb's law in scalar form. Actually, there was a French scientist, Charles Oxton Coulomb, in the year 1785. He has done a lot of experiments to measure the electric force between the charge body. And then from his observation, he has formulated a law in mathematical form. It is like this one. According to this scientist, the electric force Point charges is directly proportional to the magnetic law the product. Inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. If we consider there are Then force of attraction or repulsion between them is given by. You can see the 
these are the two point charges. The separation distance is R. Then this F is proportional to the product of magnitude of charges and inversely proportional to the square of distance. So what does it mean? If the value of the charge increases, product of charge increases, the magnitude of force also increases. But on the other side, if the distance between two charges increases, then the value of the force decreases because it is inversely proportional to square of the distance. So this equation can be written as F equal to K into Q1 Q2 upon R square. What is K? Where K is known as electrostatic force constant or it is known as Coulomb's constant. This K depends on what? It depends on the type of the nature of the medium present between the charges as well as it depends on the SI sorry as well as it depends on the systems of units which is used to measure the force, distance, charges Q1 and Q2. In SI system when the charges are placed in vacuum that is in free space then value of K is given by 8.9875 into 10 raised to 9 with unit Newton meter square per Coulomb square this can be written as approximately 9 into 10 raised to 9 Newton meter square per Coulomb square. Sometimes this K is replaced by 1 upon 4570. So this equation reduces to in SI system F equal to 1 upon 4 pi F70 Q1 Q2 upon R square. So it is equation 1. From this we can discuss about F70. What is F70? So this F70 will be 1 upon 4 by T. Substituting the value of K, 8.9875. You will get the answer is 8.84 into 10 raised to minus 12 with reciprocal of unit of K. Coulomb square per Newton meter square. This F70 is known as electrical permittivity of free space or vacuum. If the same charges Q1 and Q2 again separated by the same distance are, but they are placed in any insulating medium then this F70 should be replaced by the permittivity of that medium which is known as F1. then F70 is replaced by
electrical permittivity epsilon of that medium. So this equation reduces to Fn, the force in medium between two charges is 1 upon 4 epsilon, 1 q2 upon r square. Now if you take the ratio of this equation 1 in 2, then f upon fn will be equal to epsilon upon epsilon g. It is the ratio of same kind of two physical quantity is denoted by epsilon r. It can also be denoted by the symbol of capital K. So this implies this f upon fn equal to k. This implies force between two charges in insulating medium is f upon k. What is epsilon r? This epsilon r or k is known as relative permittivity of medium and it is unitless or k is known as dielectric constant of that insulating medium Regarding this, you will study in this next lesson. From this one can write the force between two charges in medium is equal to the kth part of the force between the same two charges placed in vacuum at the same distance. Now this equation of force is useful in defining the definition of a unit of charge. As you know, the SI unit of charge is Coulomb. So how does it come? Let us see. Now as we have seen, now as we have seen earlier, in the electric force, so this electric force acts along the line joining the two charges. This law holds only for stationary point charges as well as it is applicable only for those charge bodies whose sizes are very very small compared to that of the separation distance between them. The SI unit of charge, so now let us we define the definition of Coulomb, SI unit of charge is Coulomb. In equation F equal to K into Q1 Q2 upon R square, if we take Q1 equal to Q2 equal to 1 Coulomb, distance R is 1 meter then F equal to K equal to 9 into 10 raised to 9 Newton. So this force is too much large force. So from this point of view, we can say 1 Coulomb is also bigger, very very large quantity of charge. So this 1 Coulomb is that amount of charge 
which repels an equal and similar charge with a force of 9 into 10 raised to 9 Newton when placed in vacuum at a distance of 1 meter from it. It means there are two charges having the value of 1 coulomb separated by distance of 1 meter placed in vacuum. Then the force between them is 9 into 10 raised to 9 Newton. So 1 coulomb is that amount of charge which repels an equivalent similar charge with a force of 9 into 10 raised to 9 Newton when placed in vacuum at a distance of 1 meter from it. But in CGS system, in electrostatic CGS system, the unit of charge is electrostatic unit of charge. Symbolically it can be written as ESC of charge. It can also be read as state coulomb and state C. So what will be the definition? So one ESC of charge is that amount of charge which repels an equal and similar charge with a force of one time when placed in vacuum at a distance of one centimeter from it. This one coulomb equal to 3 into 10 raised to 9 state coulomb or you can write 3 into 10 raised to 9 ESC of charge this you can determine by using the same formula so these are the topic experience